Hello everyone, Kerry Griffiths here, or as you know me, Kerry the Crafter. So, it's the last day of July 2024, July 31st, um, and this bad boy is over. Well, it's the last day of it. If you're unfamiliar with what this is, this is um, hashtag GLI postcard play. It was a challenge I ran in July 2024. Um, although the, it can be run at whenever time by any consecutive 31 days to choose if you fancy doing it. Um, this video basically is a huge, huge thank you. I cannot believe the response I've had for this challenge. Um, for a few years, I've been asked by my subscribers and my friends and followers, oh, Kerry, will you run a challenge? Will you run a challenge? And I really struggled to say yes, because I couldn't find something that I thought would be all inclusive or as, as inclusive as I could get it for as many different skills as I could get. Also something that I would enjoy doing because it's a big undertaking for myself as well. Um, and basically, I knew I was never going to be able to make anything unique because I'm not sure how many unique ideas are left in the world now. Um, so I knew that it would be doing something similar to what someone may have done in the past. And I haven't done much research on the postcard challenge. Um, I did hear that someone a few years ago did a month long postcard thing, but I don't know whether it was anywhere near what I've done. And to be honest, I was happy not to do the research. I went, you know, I'm, I know I'm not taking someone else's idea. I'm just having an idea. Um, and I think that twisting it with the rules that I put in, there are very three rules, um, by twisting those rules slightly, I kind of made it unique for you guys, but left it as wide open as I possibly could. And I'm ecstatic about it. That that was just, it was, it was a lot of work. Um, and what I did is, I thought about the idea for a few months and played around and I had, I had it written on my desk so that every time I was working, I could look down and let, let it seep into my brain and ruminate. And I came up with the challenge, which you all loved. Yeah, part of this video is I want to give some feedback, some questions I've had. Um, and also a big part of this is I want to give a shout out and a thank you to nine other channels. Now, when I was building this challenge, it became very apparent to me that I should let you guys know a couple of weeks in advance of the 1st of July, because you're going to need time to prep. I needed time to prep and also get resources in to let it marinate in your brain, to let things seep in and get, get done. So, so I knew the launch date was going to be a couple of day, a couple of weeks ahead of the 1st of July, which would be the first postcard. I also knew that little old me was never going to be able to reach as many people as I wanted with the launch video or have as much impact or excitement on my own that could be generated by more. So I reached out to some friends who are YouTube creators, um, fellow designers, other people out there who I knew and I went, right, offered them the idea and without a hesitation of a doubt, every one of them went, oh yes, 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 I will do that, I will do that, great, I'll be on board, be on board. Um, so I, I sent out a list of what the rules were and some sort of guidelines, expecting a little bit of feedback as I went along, which, which we did have a, the odd little bit when Kerry, I'd iron that out before we give it to the public, which is fine. But the reason I put it out to YouTube creators ahead of time, and I did everything from a really small channel with only, say, 100, maybe 150 um, subscribers up to, actually, I think I was the biggest channel. channel. Yeah, because I'm close to 82,000, so I said it was 81,000 subscribers, I think, when I launched. I think I was actually the biggest channel, channel and, and many in between, because I wanted to reach and support a whole gamut of people. So they all had it ahead of time so they could work it so that when I did the math, the launch video when it launched and the idea or the challenge had been launched by all of us on our channels or via imagery, I calculated that we reached approximately 200,000 people 
that one day. Now, I, I'm not about to delve into all of the analogs, or not analogs, analytics, sorry, of everything, but I know because Mariah from Pierre Marta Studio has been kind of keeping track of stuff as well. And I know by the end of week two, there was over 700 YouTube videos on YouTube with, oh, I've lost track of how many channels. It was just, it just grew and grew and grew, which is so exciting because the level of artwork that was being created was so inspiring me and others and being talked about and my whole germ of an idea of doing this challenge was I wanted to spotlight other channels, other creators, other people who have Instagram and TikTok. I wanted to get everyone the chance of being exposed to a bigger audience. I mean I've been incredibly lucky. Um, my channel has grown and I've been very lucky with the opportunities I've had to make it grow. But I do remember 14, nearly 15 years ago when I was starting out, it was so hard even to get to 100 subscribers. And so part of what I was doing was I was trying to expose these talented creators to as many different people as I could in the hopes that their channels would grow. Obviously, mine will grow a little bit as well and has done. Um, and also helped like um, Pierre Marty Studio, who have a YouTube channel and do lives four times a week to reach their next goal, um, to offer skills and sort of tutorials. You get it, you know what I did, you've watched them all I hope by now. So I just want to go down my list, got a bit of a list of people I want to talk about and thank and just say the things I was grateful for. So starting at the top of the list, Pierre Marty Studio. I decided to do this challenge outside the PM Artist Studio Facebook group, which is Makers to Mixed Media Art and Artists. Um, and I did it outside because otherwise it would only have been open to members of that private group. Also, we wouldn't have been able to share outside the group all the creativity and inspiration. So I did it from my own Facebook page, but I also included Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. So if you're not a member of that group, there's a whole several thousand people in there who have actually been part of this as well although I can't always share their inspiration out of it unless it's it's been a video or it's an image without being posted there they post it up you get it I've done it so big thank you to Patricia Mariah mother and daughter the P and the M of PM Artist Studio they both came on board they've both done their 31 postcards um excited to see how mother and daughter twisted their own styles and made things their own. Um, a little bit of resistance now and then, and I understand that, but we'll talk about resistance a little later on. But I do feel everyone involved has really enjoyed it, although I don't think there's one of us who've not gone, that was exhausting, and believe me, these bags under my eyes are genuine bags under my eyes from this challenge. Um, next, Darcy Sanders. Darcy from Darcy's Misadventures in Mixed Media, I believe her channel's called. Um, from the absolute get-go, Darcy was generating postcard backgrounds, like probably from three weeks out from the challenge, and she only needed 31. She's probably got at least triple that by now. But it's all good, because all of those are resources. They're part of a stash, and Darcy really did try some things that I wouldn't have thought doing. Um, I've been inspired, well, I've been inspired by everyone on the list. I've tried to re recreate or be inspired by something and take it to the next level for some of my own postcard shares. And by the way, um, there is a full flip through video that was launched today, probably about two hours ago, with a full flip through of all of my 31 postcards. So if you don't want to watch all of the individual launches, then you can see the flip through and it'll be there. Um, I will try and put, not try, I will put the link to the flip through in the description box below, underneath, um, along with links to all of the other channels that actually supported and helped launch this. Um, I can't link all of the channels who have taken place because I don't even know who all of them are. And there's some incredible artists out there um, who I was so grateful came on board with their own twist and their own style and their own view of art and it's just amazing 
Um, next, Eddie Riaz from Eddie Makes Art. Eddie loved what you did. Eddie focused more on creating stuff that could be used on the postcards and then making postcards. Um, so some really good techniques from him. If you're somebody who likes gel printing or gel plate work, I would definitely say go across to Eddie Makes Art. The link is below, as I've said. Check out some of his channel, uh, some of his videos, especially if you're new to gel plating, gel printing, because he, he's put a lot of information out there and it's all free, guys. All of us content creators have done this for free to share skills and knowledge, how to, tip, to hints and tips. It's been wonderful. Next, Rhonda Donar from Devin Rex Art. Um, I've used more than one of Devon, uh, one more than one of Rhonda's products in my postcards. A very talented lady, a great designer. Um, another one who I'm watching her channel because I know it's going to grow and it's going to grow quite quickly. The lady's got a gift, and I love what she does. Next, Lisa Mingus from um, Making It with Lee, Making It with Mingus, Making It with Lisa. Making it with me, Mingus. Um, Lisa started her channel only a few months ago and reached out to me and said, Kerry, um, I wouldn't mind any feedback you can give me. I really want to get into doing YouTubes. Any help along the way, positive feedback would be lovely. And I, I, I did what I could and I've, I've given as much constructive criticism that I can to help refine lessons that I've learnt myself along the way. And when Lisa started sharing her videos, which she was quite nervous about in the first place, as we all are, because we don't know how things are going to be received, the whole artist community have embraced her and supported her in what she's doing. And now her channel is... How many? It's got to be a few hundred. A few hundred subscribers. So again, it's... It's giving confidence and support to Lisa and Lisa's growing and she's sharing and she's she again has her own twist on how she wants to create content and it's fabulous to see so Lisa good job Lisa lovely to see you and it was fabulous to have you on board lady um actually I've written this wrong haven't I I've got this the wrong way around okay I don't think Rhonda is Devon Rex Art Rhonda, what is your channel name? Good grief, Rhonda, where's, where is it? I haven't got it written down. In the description box below, as I said, is the name with next to it is who it is. Because Devon Rex Art is your land, um, or Devon Rex... I'm so confused, I'm just so tired. Just check out below. Um, your land from Devon Rex Art, I think it is. Devon Rex for art. Obviously I shouldn't be making this video today but I'm going to do it because I want this all done and I want to be, be launching everything on the same day. Anyway, Yolanda is another one who's done some fabulous work, great designs, lovely lovely designer for Pierre Marty Studio. Again, really nice content, make sure you go across and check her out. Um, and yeah, I'm screwing up all of these names, all of these channels but I'm known for not knowing names. I remember when my mother was alive, she would very often be heard to be calling the dog in from the garden by either my name or my sister's name. It runs in the family. We can't remember a name to save our life. I reckon we should have been born with a tattoo of our name put on us. So Yolande, fabulous. Again, her products are great as well. Gayla Castanelli. You know Gayla and I have been buddies for several years now. And the moment I got Gail onto a video link, because we speak periodically, and I did say to Gail, I went, Gail, you launch a video every single day. I know you're under a lot of pressure. I know this is going to fall when you've got your retreat going. Um, is there any way? And I hadn't even finished the sentence and Gail went, yep, send me the details. And I went, OK. And bless her, within probably f two weeks, Gail had created all 31 postcards, videoed them and scheduled them without missing a beat, still keeping all her daily videos going and prepping for, a, for an art retreat, um, a journal retreat of her own. You know, Gail, I don't know how you do it. I 
this month of July, I will have filmed, edited and uploaded 35 videos. The shortest, I believe, is 12 minutes long. I want to say the majority of them are between 20 minutes and 40 minutes long. And I think there's even a couple in there that are close to an hour long. I don't know how anyone does a video a week, a video a day. Um, just the editing alone has been a bit mind blowing, but I did it. Challenge is a challenge, but it was easy. It wouldn't be a challenge, would it? So, Gail, thank you so much for your support in that. It was lovely to see you on board. Um, Miriam from Art Curious. Miriam has created so many fun, comical, naive, um, just stuff. Uh, I believe, I believe Miriam is in Israel, if I if I remember right. I'm sure it's Israel. And she does lives, she does YouTube stuff, she designs stuff and that she designed the set of fish that I used on, oh good grief, which one was it? I won't be able to remember, but I used her fish stamps. Um, she is also a designer for PM Artist Studio. Wonderful lady, very creative, very good at looking at stuff and finding something within it. Like Miriam will very often look at a couple of ink splodges and all of a sudden she's drawn an animal out of them or she's created something from it. I, and a lot of her art is very much, she'll take a magazine, she'll do something with it with paint, she'll outline it, cut it out. And before you know it, you've got something that never looked like a page in its life and it's completely different. Loved it. Thank you so much, Miriam, for the support. Thank you all of you for promoting me. It's been wonderful and promoting and supporting each other, may I add. Um, the last channel on the list was Nicole from Relax Gut Glue. Now, I was a little bit hesitant to reach out to Nicole because Nicole is an inspirational artist for collage and glue booking. And she certainly helped me understand my own glue booking, which I'd done for years, but didn't see it as a thing. It was just a thing I did. Um, but then when I discovered Nicole from Relax Cut Glue, to find out how she'd taken magazine cuttings, fussy cuttings, digital cuttings, um, cuttings from books from Amazon and stuff like that, and mix it in with her own creativity, her style, her sense of humour. And once I discovered her version of glue booking, um, I've got probably five different glue books on the go at the moment and I love it, each and every one of them and I think one of the big lessons I learned which I really have taken on board from Nicole is you can start a glue book but you don't need to finish the glue book you can start a collage page you don't need to finish the collage page you can also go back to it I mean I know some of her glue books have taken a few years to finish I know probably most of mine are going to be around for at least the next four or five years because Every time you flip through your own glue book, you may have a page that's not finished and all of a sudden you're like, you'll see something on your desk or you'll do a whole new batch of fussy cutting and go, oh, that will go on that page and you'll remember a page and put it on there. And that's so wonderful. And I've used my glue booking as very much a mindful, calming process to deal with my anxiety and my stress levels. And sometimes when I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, I'll just pull out my physical drawers uh, fussy, fussy cut drawers. I pull out the fussy cuts and have a go. So I reached out to Nicole and I said, Nicole, I don't know whether you do anything with the gel plate. Um, if you would like the idea of doing the postcard challenge, and I know she did postcards. She, she'd been making them for years and she sends them out freebies occasionally and thank yous. And I said, if you'd like to do it, let me know. I will print a load of papers and send them to you. And it was going to be a happy mail to um, Nicole, just as a thank you for what inspiration she given me. And she went, no, nope, I've got a gel plate. I've got prints. I can absolutely do this. And I was taken back going, oh, wow, OK. And what was fun is Nicole put her own spin on. She only needed shorts. So we're only talking, I think they're a minute long or reels or stories, whichever format they're in. Um, they in themselves reach a different audience than I usually reach. I don't do shorts or reels or stories. I have tried them in the past and they haven't worked for me. But in 2025, I need to refocus on those because they're another way of driving traffic around the internet 
to inspire and you understand what I mean and what Nicole did is every time she did one of these shorts she chose a piece of music that inspired the postcard which I thought was brilliant and I love some of those oh excuse me I've just had a coffee and it's not agreeing with me um that's all the channels now there was one other group of people I did want to thank they were aware of it um of the postcard challenge um they were also quite excited with the idea of the concept because Mariah from PM Artist Studio reached out to Gel Press who she has a working relationship with to let them know this was going on just in case part of their design team would be interested in doing it I think I probably left it a little late for them to be honest but hand on heart as far as I know every one of my gel plates is a gel press um I love them, I use them, and I'm so pleased that they were aware of it. I'm hoping maybe if they came across some artists that really inspired them, that Gel Press would reach out the next time they're looking for a design team member ago. Um, we've seen your work with July Postcard Play. Would you like to be part of the design team? That would be wonderful for someone to have that opportunity. But thank you, Gel Press, so much for actually creating a product that is so worthwhile, and I love it to bits. Okay. A couple of questions, um, a couple of things that came up from the chat, because that's all the thank you's done. Um, there was a little bit of resistance to putting numbers on the fronts of postcards. I get it. Um, although I think every single person, even those who had a little bit of a resist to it, um, once I'd explained why I did that, they embraced it. And my thing was, I wanted the number on there purely because I thought there's some way of keeping a record of which order they're in. But I wanted the number on the front because I wanted to see whether people would hide the number within their design. I also said you could do numerals, you could do Roman numerals, you could create your own symbols for each number. You could possibly, like some of them, I mean there's one of them I think they had 11 fish or number 11. Um, one had so many buttons, was it butterflies? Can't remember. There was one who had something else that was the same number as the day. I said you could start by having one dot of paint on number one and 31 dots on number three. So I, once people got that concept from me, everyone embraced it and did it. It was absolutely fabulous. I loved it. Um, the big question, which everyone keeps asking me, and I pulled back from answering that, and I think I'm still going to pull back from answering it, is that everyone's like, oh, Kerry, can we do this at an annual event? I need to think on that one. Um, first of all, the challenge is out there. Um, the launch video is out there. If anyone stumbles across that video, they can easily do the challenge themselves whenever they want. If they want to do it in July, they can do it in July. If they just want to choose 31 consecutive days, they can do it over 31 days. All I would say is no matter when you discover the challenge, if you always use the same hashtag, which was this one, your artwork and creations will be added to this hashtag. So no matter who puts it in at what time or what date or whatever platform, if anyone has done the challenge, then all of that will never be lost. It's not going to be lost anyway, but it's all in one hashtag so that you can see it. It's like, it, I challenge you guys, after you finish watching this video, go to your search box, type that into the YouTube search, the hourglass, hit enter and see what comes up. Good grief is there a slew of stuff. So, um, so yeah, so you can do the challenge whenever you choose to do it. I am very much a bit blown away currently by the amount it's taken to do this challenge. I mean, it's, I don't even know what date it is. I think it's the 30th of July because this launches tomorrow. That would be right. Um, I didn't understand how much of an undertaking creating a challenge was. Um, I think part of that was too because in my naive little world I thought oh it's only going to reach a couple of hundred people, it's going to be a small nice little challenge. I didn't realise it was going to inspire and encompass so many people from those who call themselves professional artists all the way down to those who are just a hobbyist 
or someone who's an absolute newbie. You all came on board and had a go, which is mind blowing, as I said. However, to to support it in the way I wanted to support it, like every single day I have spent a couple of hours every day trying to search out posts and YouTubes and imagery and shared them through my Facebook page or tried to share videos in other ways. I've tried to put everything that's been created that I've stumbled upon and I know I've missed hundreds of posts and hundreds of videos um, and I've tried to share as many things as I can and there were always some that kept catching my eye because I like their style. Like there, there was a lady in Australia called Lee and Lee, I apologise, completely forgot to make a note to your channel name. But if you go to my Facebook page, Kerry Griffith's Creative Designs, you scroll down a bit, you will see posts from Lee in there, her videos. Lee has a very unique style that I really enjoyed, so I was drawn to seeing her videos. Um, but the undertaking of trying to read that amount of comments every single day, um, trawl through, and trawl's probably the wrong, no, trawl's the right word, trawl through all of the Facebook posts and I couldn't do Instagram or TikTok because I don't do Instagram, I don't do TikTok, but you're all really good at sharing each other's stuff as well. So undertaking that challenge has been huge. I think if, so it's not a no, but if this runs next year, I'm going to have to rethink a few things and maybe call in some help because just moderating <laughs> that amount of workload um, has been a lot for me and I gratefully done. I've enjoyed every single moment, moment of it. Um, all the creativity, the inspiration, loved everything about it, but I need to lie down in the dark room for a little while. Um, 35 videos, plus my normal workload, plus running my Etsy store, plus designing, it just, just, whoa, my gosh, um, not many sleep hours this month, but I just need to think smarter. If we do this again, then I just need to change a few things about it. Um, someone did say, oh, can we do one for Christmas? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, the reason being for that is I put the challenge into July. If you are someone who celebrates Christmas, you could have added in a few Christmas postcards for Christmas in July. You could have hidden the numbers within things like advent calendars that were maybe in the background of imagery. I do know who was that watch last, not last week, was it last week? I think it was last week, who was it? Oh, I think it was Yolande. Yolande did, she did a Christmas postcard, but, um, and I'm not, I'm not anti-Christmas guys. What, what I was trying to do and what I want to continue to try to do is, if I did a challenge closer to Christmas that was Christmas themed, that means everyone who doesn't celebrate Christmas is outside of the box. Um, and I don't want to do that. Um, so I, I will hopefully never tie a challenge to a religion or a religious or a political holiday or something like that unless it was a really short one. So say I ran a challenge for the 4th of July for my American friends or the 1st of July for my Canadian friends. Um, it would be a one day challenge that was specifically for Independence Day or 4th, do you get what I mean? So I, I wouldn't run something that was that specific. However, if I do run the postcard challenge again, what I will do is I am likely to take the number rule off. So there'll be no number on the front of the postcard. The number has to be on the back of the postcard. That would open it up. So if you wanted to celebrate by doing 31 Christmas themed postcards, you can do it. Your choice. If you wanted to do 31 Hanukkah postcards, you can do it. You want to do I'm not going to go into all the religions because I don't want to 
list ones that I know and then miss ones I don't know and I don't want people to be upset by that. So it also means you could do 31 Valentine's postcards, you could do 31 Easter postcards so you've got them ready for Easter. Um, you get it, I know you get it. So the answer on am I going to do the postcard challenge next year is still the jury is out. Um, I think it was a very inspirational challenge. I think part of the impact of it was because it was the first time it was done. Um, would we have the same buy-in the second time it ran? I don't know because I personally don't think I could do 31 postcard videos over 31 days again. That That was a lot of workload for me. I would definitely be the host of it. I would definitely share. I would definitely support others in it. But I doubt whether I would do 31 postcards again. Um, and I think the same would be said for some of the other YouTube channel creators who are larger channels. Uh, we are juggling a lot of balls in the air because for a lot of us, um, YouTube is an income stream and you don't want to ignore things because social media can forget you very quickly. And the algorithm behind YouTube, if it sees things dipping, it sort of puts you to one side, moves on to somebody else. And you want to maintain a certain presence that's going to grow, should I say. Um, so I'm not sure I could pull off 31 again. Although there's always the idea that, like, um, I did suggest it to Patricia and Mariah. I said, why don't you share the challenge? So Patricia does the first... 15, Mariah does a second 15 or 16, or maybe Patricia does every even date and you, Mariah does every odd date. Maybe I would reach out to someone, say, like um, Darcy and say, OK, Darcy, we'll do every other week. I'll do week one, you do week two, I'll do week three, you do week four. And these are lessons that I have learned from doing this challenge. And it could be like... Um, my friends in the Netherlands, Paula and Janka, uh, they were both creating the postcards. They could become team. They, they could both be in the Netherlands. They could do fun stuff together, maybe work on the postcards together. So these are lessons I've learned. So the answer to the question is, I don't know yet. I want to talk to pretty much everyone on this list because they were implementing, well, instrumental in making this work as well as I was. And I would like to, I'll reach out to them individually and guys don't go, oh, Kerry's going to be on the phone too. Give me a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I've got a load of work to catch up on and design work. I'm now behind in my design work. And I think I've got one day to think of a, or not think, I've got designs on the go, finish off a design for PM Artist Studio. And Mariah has said, just send it when you've got it. And I'm playing around with a new range of designs that I want to implement some time into. So I'll put some time into which I will do. So I'm going to reach out to each of these as I go along. And I'm just really, I'm looking forward to doing that and finding out little bits of feedback. I think we're all on exactly the same page. Um, yeah, and I think that's it, guys. I mean, I've gone through every one of my notes here. Um, what's this? Griffin Shale. I see, I did write it down. It's there. Um, Rhonda, Rhonda Donar, her channel is Griffin Shale. That was what it was. I have to see, I'm awful at this. So PM Artist Studio's channel is PM Artist Studio. Darcy Sanders is Misadventures of Miss Me Mixed Media. Eddie Riaz is Eddie Makes Art. Rhonda Donar is Griffin Shale. Lisa Mingus is Making It With Mingus. Yolande is Devon Rex for Art, I think it is. Gail Agostinelli is Gail Agostinelli. Miriam is Art Curious. Nicole is Nicole Relax Cut Glue. There you go, I've got them right verbally in the end anyway, but they're all listed below anyway. So guys, this was absolutely insane. We are done. We are dusted. 
we are over. I am incredibly happy with the response. I now have, and I can't reach it, I've, I've got my um, postcard album. All 31 are now dated, signed, numerically done. They're all in my album. I will have that memory forever of my first ever challenge. Um, Oh, one other thing. Someone has asked me whether I would do the challenge next year with ATCs or artist trading cards. Um, I don't know. I don't. I think you're either someone who does artist trading cards or you're not. It could, however, be an option that J July postcard play may. One of the rules could be it's either a postcard or an ATC or it's a combination of postcards and ATCs, which would add a bit of variety, but with the same content, uh, concept. You're still dealing with a piece of rectangular substrate to create art upon. So I don't know, that idea has just popped into my brain just there. So I don't know, I need to get my notebook out. I need to be making notes. So this is 35 minutes long. Where the heck did that go? I've been rambling on, obviously, and I've been blundering through names. Guys, I am so appreciative and I thank you so much. It gladdens my heart that you believe in me to the point where you trust me to put something out there that you're going to find educational, enjoyable, comedic sometimes. <laughs> Good no, so some of my stuff is comedian. Um, and your support is ever grateful. And please go to all of the other channels who supported this. And I'm not just saying those in the list. If you come across an artist, their YouTube channel, their website, or w w however they've done it, please hit the like, hit the share, hit the heart, hit the thumbs up. If it's art that really you've gone, oh, I love how they, they've done that, hit the subscribe and notification, notification, but I can't speak, notification button. It costs you nothing, but it means absolutely everything to the people who are creating all of the artwork free of charge, sharing it free of charge f for everyone. And I'm, I'm so, so pleased with it. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm absolutely rambling. I'm Karen Griffiths. I'm also this guy. I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Thank you. Love you all.